Hi, everybody. Hi, I'm Skaden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. I'm Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel. We are the Yahoo and the Torah Rumble channel. We are uh, a little spunky this morning as well. And um, except for Cade, he just uh, I blew him out of the water right there on the intro. How did that happen, Cade? I'm very tired. He's very tired. Everybody around is tired. Everybody's been up until like three, four in the morning. Jade, you were up. Uh, you went to a party last night. Is that where you went? Where'd no. you go? Oh, it wasn't a party. What, where'd you go last night? Why were you up all night? Reading Jasher. Oh, you were in your room reading Jasher. That sounds like a party to me. Okay, man. No? no? That's, that's, not, that's not great? When you're proofing it, it's less than a party. It's not. Don't you think that the scribes and the, the, the people back in the day were like partying every time they got another scribe? What about Ezra? So. Remember Ezra was sitting there and he had, he wrote like 140 scrolls and he sat there for days on end and they ate grass for a while and all that jive? Yeah, that yes. sound good. Huh? I don't remember what it was, but there's supposed to be way more than that that we never, ever made it through. So, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. We are spunky as we can possibly be here uh, in the, uh, what do we call this place? The apocalyptic country that we are living in with no food, no gas, and no um, no propane. But we are um, hanging in there and doing the do. And uh, this is us. Today is dog bath day. We are going to get the dog's bath, which is a very hectic time of our day of our week and we will be punching this through. Gentlemen, <clears throat> what happened yesterday in this that we can uh, recap? Eli. Let's see. Let's go. All right, Eli. I got this. Uh, Eli's so, just about it. to, uh, something's happening. Go. Yesterday he <laughs> was about to sacrifice Isaac and then a messenger of who stopped him and he was deemed righteous and I don't remember if anything right. happened. And we also had Sarah, uh, she um, died and talked about how she was a good person, how she was always doing y'all's will, always doing what y'all wanted her to do. Um, the, the, and she like wandered away trying to with, the whole, with some of her, with some of Abraham's men to go try to find Isaac because they couldn't find him, but they found, and she ended up in Kebron and died there and Isaac and Abraham found her there. Right, and so we are, um, I'm lost. I'm completely lost. Give me a second here. All right, there we go. Uh, this PDF program blew up. So anyway, we are on some of the final days of the writings of Abraham. And for those who are interested in downloading this, this is an absolutely free download. You can download right here at Yah Scriptures. Uh, single column, that is the 66 book one, the very first one. And the Apocrypha, the one we're reading right here, is there. It is a free PDF download. You guys can download them, put them on all your devices, send them via email. It is a wonderful, wonderful gift just getting the PDFs in the hands of people if they're willing to read the Word of Yah is simply amazing. For anybody that is looking for the um, hardback, hard copy of this, which will be the greatest translation in English that has ever bestowed us by far. It has had so much love, so much work, and so much time that has been built into this. You get 103 books, 64 bucks, large print. I did it for all of us blind people out there that we can see so we can't... No more excuses. We can now read our scriptures because we can should be able to see it. And um, if not, you'll probably have to get binoculars at that point if you cannot see this large print. So with that, um, everybody, let's start with 151. You guys ready? Yep. Okay, here we go. Thus I, Abram, began to be old, having seen 137 years. <clears throat> Boy, wouldn't it be amazing to like hit 137 years old and then go, ah, yeah, I think I'm getting old. You know, that's like, I, I say that every day. I've said that since the day of like 30s. I'm like, oh man, this is getting, every day is a little worse than the, the day before. Okay, well, all of these uh, older friends of ours, you guys rock, because I don't know how you guys will do it. Two, wherefore, I write the record of my life that others might benefit from the workings of Yahuwah, my Elohim with me. And I bear this witness that Yahuwah liveth and reigneth in Shemaim, and he is the most high Elohim over all the earth. He hath led me since he first appeared to me in a dream. When I was three years old, when I was three years of age, even unto this time, when I am old and bowed down with years, he hath done only good to me and not evil all the days of my life. Surely I will love him and serve him forever and ever and will magnify his name on high before all people. Now, Abraham didn't have an easy going life, right? I mean, he says it is, uh, you know, it, it's been decent or it's been something of the sort. But we know that he has had a tremendous amount of um, issues. But he says that Yahuwah has been with him, right? That he has only done good to him and not evil all the days of life. Jay, do we have an issue? 
Uh, the dog just keeps climbing. I'm petting him. All right, we're having an issue here. We're going to break up on this, and we're going to have a little family uh, meeting here. Um, what's going on? I'm you guys like not petting the dog. I am. Okay. I'm literally petting Will you please pet the dog, Eli, so it stops scratching Jaden? He's <laughs> going berserk on the other end of the table. I, I think he just wants Jaden to pet him, Jaden only. No, nah, that's not true. He'll take anybody that pets him. <clears throat> All right, guys. Sorry for our family feud destruction. I'm sitting here as the kids are, like, fighting over the table. So, um... <laughs> Let's, let's continue on. It's already been a wild day. Okay, one fifty-two. After Sarah's death, I sent my son Yitchak unto Shem and Aber to learn more perfectly the ways of the ancients, and he remained there three years before returning to my camp. You guys are going to make me bust out. You guys should stop doing this. <clears throat> 153. In the 138th year of my life, my brother Ablamak, sovereign of Gerar, died being 193 years of age. Wherefore, I took my people and journeyed to Gerar, where we mourned over Ablamak, for he was a good man, and Kadesh man, who walked in perfectness before his Elohim, and had made his calling and election sure. Therefore we rejoiced in knowing of his end. Nevertheless, we sorrowed to be parted from him, but I knew that I would soon go to him, which knowledge comforted my heart. And his son Ablamak was chosen to reign in his stead. So, so there's our Ablamax. Yeah, so I think this is the first time we ever get an age on this guy. On um, Ablamak? I think so. Um, do we remember if we got an age of Abraham? I don't remember any age anymore. He was like 60 years older than Abraham, and like that means he was like 100 something years older than uh, Sarah. Well, that's the thing is, is we know there's multiple Ablamacs, right? We know that dad, dad was Ablamac, son was Ablamac. Um, who's shaking whose head? What, what, what uh, screaming are we having? said here? that it was over 100. 100. Was like 100 no, because yeah. Sarah was only 10 years older than Abraham, so he was only. Like, oh no, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about the next. I'm thinking about uh, Rebecca next guy. Never mind. All right, next Rebecca's a chick, not a guy. Okay, 154. We're, we're just, everybody's really tired of this table. Okay, the following year, Lot, my brother's son, died being 140 years old. He, too, was just a man and accepted of Yahuwah, although he did not walk in all the ways of the ancients. For he had covered his own property and separated from the community of Elohim. Therefore, he must receive a just reward. I'm trying to make it through. Mr. Cole started walking over here, was laughing over the jokes and stuff. Can we get it together? Is everyone good? I'm good. Do we need a moment of laughter or something no, I'm good. to get this out? Can we compose ourselves, please? Eli, do you need to go take a trip somewhere? No. Okay, you're giggling. It's not going to happen. I'm trying to do the very best I can. <clears throat> okay, and it's not helpful when you're sitting here giddy like this. Okay, let's continue on, gentlemen, mature people of this house, I think. Okay, three? Yep. Nevertheless, Yahuwah loved him because he maintained his integrity, even in the midst of wicked Sodom. Wherefore, Yahuwah saved him and those of his household who, who would be saved from destruction. And Yahuwah made of him also a mighty people. So was he in Sodom when the Sodom got destroyed? Mm, I don't know, but we do know that Dad grew up with Abraham in Shalom, right? In the city of Shalom. Right. I don't, I don't know the other part. Okay, 155. Now, when my son Yitchak was about to return unto me from the city of Shalom, the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Behold, in the city of Quran dwelleth Bethuel, the son of the, thy brother Nacor, who is dead. Unto Bethuel has been born Rivka, who at this time is 10 years of age. Huh. Okay. Send now and fetch her as a wife to thy son Yitchak, for thus have I appointed that she shall bear unto him the chosen seed. Now, this is not something you get in the regular scriptures, right? right you, nobody ever gets that this dude, I'm not going to say the P word, pedophilia, but the dude was 40, wasn't he 47? 40. 40 years old, and this girl was 10 years old. This is really, really, really super young. <clears throat> now, I'm not judging. I'm just saying that that's very young. And at this age, she went into the mother's tent. And so, um, anyone? Thoughts? Does it, um, seem, does it seem young to anyone? Or is that yeah, it does say that in Jasher as well. She's yeah. 10, so I mean, so maybe she really was 10. Maybe it was different days back then or something. I don't know. Let's go, 156. So I call unto me Eleazar, my trusted companion who had been with me since we had come out of the city of Shalom. And I said unto him, Put now thine hand under my thigh, and swear unto me before the Most High Elohim, that thou shalt go into the city of Quran, and bring thence Rivka, daughter of Bethuel, son of Nacor, my brother, to be a wife unto my son Yitchak, according to the word of Yahuwah. But if the maiden refuse to come with thee, thou shalt be free of this, of this thine oath. So Eliezer swore before the Most High Elohim, and departed from me in peace. He also pursued his journey to Quran and found Rivka, even as I had said, and returned with her after the return of my son Yitchak from the city of Shalom. Thus Yitchak took Rivka to be wife when he was 40 years old, he having four other wives 
but Rivka he took to wife in the tent of Sarah. Okay, let's discuss this real quick. Because we don't, there's no other scriptures anywhere that we have this that it talks about his other wives. We do remember, remember from, it was, uh, it's in Jubilees. I just read this in Jubilees. That um, Rebecca went and um, had this conversation that he had um, about him being pure and about him not touching any women. And he says he was, uh, he, I think he said he was like 40 years old in Jubilees. Somewhere around that, and he had never touched a woman and nothing of the sort. So for us to end up with uh, four wives, that is definitely different than what we have of any scriptures. And if he had four other wives, how can we never ever hear about any of them at this point? It's like, where did they go? I don't know. Maybe they weren't important because they weren't like the true genealogy, the true generations to come. I don't know. And then maybe they weren't important, but we have Ishmael. I mean, he was like not the generation to come. I mean, yeah, he was, he, like, he was still a pretty big. He's still a pretty big tribe. I think that's. I think that's a big thing. What do, What do we make of this? Do we Do we do We just go. Hmm. It's interesting. Um, maybe he never had Shiloh with any of them. Why do we don't know? We don't know if there was any other. That, that could be. There could be no other children with any of them. Very interesting. Um, things to speculate on, and there's there's things in these apocryphas that are very things that make you go hmm. And that's one of them. Okay. Five. And Rivka bare no children. Wherefore I knew that Yahuwah should work a marvelous work in her, even as Sarah, as even as in Sarah before her. Therefore my heart rejoiced in Rivka, the wife of my son Yichek, for she was pure and virtuous, like unto Sarah, my beloved, who had preceded me into the rest of Yahuwah. Now, at ten years old, the qualities of a human being are not there yet, right? As far as if you're if you're at 10 years old, we have a tremendous amount of growing left, a, a just a just a lot. And even from whatever age we're at, it doesn't matter what age we're at. We always have room to grow. But I find it very interesting that he, um, even at 10 years old, he, he says she was pure and virtuous. And he compares her to Sarah. You wouldn't have anything else on that? Um, I don't think so. All right, 157. This same year, I took to wife Keturah, the daughter of my old friend Ablamak, sovereign of Gerar, who was dead. Keturah bare me six sons, so that in all I received of Yahuwah eight sons and 328 daughters, being in all 336 souls. Wow. Thus did Yahuwah increase me greatly besides the many sons who were adopted to me, and thus I increased continually before him. Now, that is a tremendous amount of estrogen in that house. Yeah, that's a lot of daughters, man. That is a lot of, uh, that's a lot of womanhood there. Um, three, 328 daughters. Um, boy, that's a lot of that's a lot of daughters. You want to have anything on that? Um, surprised I don't even know how you get to that. Surprised they're not mentioned either. Muchas wives. You know, it taught even when because it does talk about Katura and you would have to have. Well, we know that when before he left um, Shalom, he had no uh, sons. Right. But he had a pile of wives and daughters prior to leaving that. So you would to get three hundred and twenty-eight daughters. We're talking. Like forty wives. I mean, there's, that's a lot of wives. I mean, that's one hundred and thirty-seven. He has how many now? Three hundred and something. Three hundred and twenty-eight daughters, and he has uh, six sons, and he has a total of eight sons and three hundred and twenty. I think roughly you would have had like three, uh, one a year. So three if he had half a year, he could have three. Well, he could have three wives, and four wives, four wives no, having I'm one kid. I'm talking daughters. He have like three or four daughters a year to have that many daughters. Well, yeah, you'd have a pile of wives. I mean, he, he yeah, ended no. up, he came out of, I mean, I don't know. I, all we could do is debate or discuss. Strains are never, ever mentioned. Never, like, genealogies of, like, Abraham are never mentioned. It is very odd. I think at this point, everyone's, everyone has Father Abraham in their lineage. Yeah, Father. After hearing that. Yeah, yeah Father Abraham is your father, indeed. Uh, <laughs> it, it may not be from Isaac or Jacob, but it's probably from uh, wife 271 or something and daughter 271 or something. I don't know. All right, let's continue on. Three, thus did Yahoo increase me greatly besides the many sons who were adopted me, and thus I increased continually before Yahuwah. All right, I think we'll cut this right here. Um, my apologies to anybody who um, was offended at our little issues that we have today. Normally, we don't have snickering issues or things of the sort, but we're really, really tired in this house, so um, it's a little wild at the end of the week. So hopefully, uh, you know, we want to keep this as kodesh as possible, but we also want to keep it a fun discussion that we can all talk and, and just discuss this stuff because some of these things are are um, 
they're kind of odd, right? They're kind of squirmish, you know, when you, when you have a daughter or when you have a girl that's 10 years old, that's married a 40 year old, um, I think it's worthy to discuss that because we're all, you know, all of us probably like lift our eyebrows and like, mm, you know, it's a little, little odd. Um, because we know the world that we are in today. And so uh, it just it seems really weird. But anyway, with that, everybody, we hope that you guys have a wonderful day. We thank you guys very, very much for being part of our family. And we will see you guys again, y'all willing, tomorrow. All right, shalom. shalom.